Today we're reviewing the Orca Torch D530V video light. It boasts 1200 lumens and a runtime of up to 2 hours on high. It has a 140 degree beam angle which is ideal for recording video and has a high and low setting available via the push button. Waterproof to 150 meters and it uses a standard 18650 lithium battery. Let's have a look at what you get in the box. It comes in this basic packaging with an instruction sheet and a catalogue of Orca Torch products. A warranty card, a USB-C cable, three spare O-rings and a lanyard. It also came with this spare Orca Torch orange band. The video light comes pre-assembled with the battery installed. Discard the paper battery isolator and here you can see the charge port on the battery. Install the cable into the battery and connect it to a phone charger or computer. The LED in the battery will change to green when fully charged. The video light goes straight into high mode. A second press of the button turns the light into low mode. There is a battery indicator LED built into the press button. The video light produces a wide beam. Slide the ball mount adapter over the body of the torch and screw the head back onto the body. Position the ball adapter to the desired orientation, then tighten the retention screw. Unfortunately the ball mount is about midway on the torch. Most video lights have the mount at the front to ensure the light stays behind the camera to reduce backscatter. I use Loctite 243 on the ball thread to stop it from coming loose. This is not included. Now let's have a look at the battery performance. First the voltage drop over time. You can see that the video light can run for quite a long time. The amps draw gives you a hint at the effective light output of the video light. Finally, the most important factor is the light output. You get a very good output on high for over an hour and a half and then it starts to drop dramatically. While on low, you get up to three hours before a significant drop. So how does the Orca Torch video light compare to other lights? I'll be putting the D530V up against three other video lights that I have. My Diverite BX2 with diffuser has probably the least output of all the video lights. The Orca Torch is brighter but it has a smaller corona. The DF04 sits in the middle of the bunch, while the V25 is the most powerful video light I own. The D530V outperforms the BX2 with diffuser, which is understandable. The D530V is also larger and brighter. The D530V compares similar to the DF04, but the distribution of light is more consistent and has less fall off. The V25 video light outperforms the D530V but the V25 is substantially dearer. So what really matters is how does it perform underwater? I'm using this Orca Torch camera tray with the lights positioned relatively close. Extension arms could be used to spread the light sources further apart. On this dive, there was good visibility in the water. You can see some highlight on the fish and as I come close to the wall, the yellow zoanthids really pop. The foreground is well lit and you can compare the background where the large ray is. It's a lot darker. The blue devil fish is lit well and it stands out against the background. There's a little bit of shadowing here as I try to push into the small ledge. This shot here highlights the well-lit foreground to the unlit background. And again in this shot of the magpie perch. On this second dive, the conditions were a lot worse. You'll see more backscatter which is the particles in the water. 
I'll have to get a lot closer to the fish and the terrain that I want to video. Shots in the open won't look good at all. The lights are only effective at a short distance. This dive is definitely bad visibility. I would normally not expect to get much footage of any quality on a day like this. If I turn the video lights off, you'll get a feel for how little light is available inside this submarine. You could definitely not film without video lights. Obviously the water quality is a little murky today, so we set both video lights on low to help minimise backscatter. You might notice here that you can see the outline of the right video light. I think the left video light is pointing too far to the left. It would pay to test each light's position separately before starting filming to ensure both lights are set correctly. All things considered, the footage is not unwatchable. On the outside of the sub, I have a little bit more ambient light, but the water is still murky and once again I'll have to get close to the subject matter. I'm currently at approximately 25 metres of depth. So my conclusions. I was intentionally looking for a budget, entry-level lighting option. Orca Torch have used a standard torch housing and placed a wide-angle video LED, which helps keep their costs down. You can select the video light with a coloured LED if you need it. For me, these would cost 187 Australian dollars and it includes delivery. The ball mount is the key to using these lights with a video tray. You can even use these video lights for macro photography with this new detachment, if that's your thing. To be clear, this video light does not compete against my fish light V25 with its 3800 lumens and its front mount ball adapter. But this cost me 450 Australian dollars back in 2016. If you're looking for the next level up, the Orca Torch D910V would be your light. But it's not a budget entry level light for sure. Overall, I think the video light is a good entry point for someone not wanting to spend a fortune on lighting. It would definitely suit my needs, two of these in a tray would make a good companion for the GoPro. In my next review, I will be going over the Orca Torch camera tray, keep an eye out for that one.